MOSFETs, how do they work? Uh, what you're looking at here is an extremely complex circuit using a MOSFET. This up here is the positive rail. And I've built it like this, positive and negative rail, to illustrate what's meant by positive rail and negative rail. Circuits are often laid out this way because the power supply is what is, you know, between the, between the power supply legs is where all the circuit action happens. Okay, and just, just to show you, there's nothing on the back side of this board. There's no hidden circuitry in there. All right. It's just a board with a couple of components on it. All right. Now that that's a MOSFET. Uh, let's see if I can get it into the light. That's an IRF 530. But any you can do this demonstration with any MOSFET. Uh, can you see that? IRF 530N. Okay, and it's gate drain source just like that. And you can see that I've got the gate just coming over here, sticking up to a screw. The drain goes to the light bulb, out of the light bulb through a 1 ohm current limiting resistor to the positive rail. Okay, and from the source of the MOSFET directly to the negative rail. Okay. So that's the circuit. And then the positive and negative supply leads go up here to the Ellen Co. Precision Regulated Power Supply. And I've just barely got it turned on because that's a three volt flashlight bulb in there. So I've got about four volts, four volts, three and a half or four volts on the Ellen Co. coming to the board here. All right. Now an IRF 530N MOSFET does not need a lot of gate charge to turn on. And sometimes I can get it to turn on, in fact, most of the time I can get it to turn on just with the charge in my fingers. Okay, so now I'm going to use my hand as a resistor to go from the positive rail to the gate, and we'll see if we can turn that MOSFET on. If I can manage to leave charge on the gate, it'll stay on. There. Okay. So the MOSFET is on now because the gate is charged and only leakage is bleeding charge off of the gate. There's nothing else connected to the gate, so it's not leaking very much. And you can see that that's a bright flashlight bulb there. Now if I want to turn off the MOSFET, I need to drain, drain the charge off the gate by touching it to the source. Okay, so my resistor now my hand has drained off the charge from the gate, siphoned it off, and now the MOSFET's off. Now if I want to turn it on again, off, on, off, on, okay. So, sometimes you can tell, I think, that the MOSFET is not turning completely on, right? That bulb, if I don't manage to leave a lot of charge on the gate, the bulb only glows dimly, right? So the MOSFET is not completely on. It doesn't get sufficient charge to be on completely. It's in what's called the linear response region, where it acts more like an amplifier or rheostat than a switch. I think you can tell if I manage to just put a partial charge on there, the light dims faster and sort of fades away, and there's a fuller charge, the light's on brighter. So the MOSFET is not always an on-off switch. It depends on the magnitude of the charge on the gate. Sometimes the MOSFET can act just like a rheostat. That is, it responds linearly to the charge on the gate. You put in a slowly increasing gate input and the, MOSFET's, the MOSFET slowly increases the current that it passes.
just my finger sometimes can leave enough charge on the gate to open it up. All right, thanks for watching. There will be more. Okay, now I've added another component. I've added a variable resistor wired as a potentiometer. Have you ever wondered why they call a simple variable resistor a potentiometer? Well, because it varies potential. You can see that I've got it strung across the rails from positive rail to negative rail and then the wiper moves along that. This is a one mega ohm resistor so there's very little current flow through it but by moving the wiper from one side to the other I can select a degree of positive voltage or less voltage anywhere between zero volts to the positive rail voltage can be applied to the gate of the MOSFET directly by the potentiometer okay so what I'm going to do then is turn the potentiometer if I can keep my apparatus from falling apart I'm going to turn the potentiometer gradually towards the positive voltage rail. Okay, so did you see that? The MOSFET is turned on and then past a certain point it doesn't matter how I turn the pot because the MOSFET is just on. But at some, in some region in there the amount of voltage that I give to the gate varies the brightness of the load right so the MOSFET is in what we call a linear operation region here it's not acting as a simple switch it's acting as an amplifier I'm using a small voltage change into the gate to produce a larger voltage change across the MOSFET I'm using it as an amplifier. Okay, This is what's meant by being in the linear region of the MOSFET's operation. It's not turned fully on, and it's not turned fully off. It's getting just enough voltage to tickle it. And if I tickle it in an oscillating manner, it ne need never turn fully on but you can see that it's passing current because it's oscillating through the linear operation region okay this is a one mega ohm rheostat uh, IRF 530N MOSFET a 3 volt flashlight bulb and a 1 ohm current limiting resistor and a DC power supply. MOSFET operating in the linear conductance region according to minor variations in the gate voltage. Okay, got that? Thank you for watching.